What is up guys? Welcome back to another Ultimate Noobs Guide. Today, we will be doing a guide on Demonic Gorillas, so if you are new to the Demonic Gorillas, or just want to learn how to do them more efficiently, then this is the guide for you. We've already made quite a few Ultimate Noobs Guides on other monsters and bosses in game, so if you are interested in any of those, go ahead and check them out after this video, they are in the description. Additionally, when we do get to the gear setups towards the end, I will be going over tiers and how much money they cost and how much they make per hour, but those statistics will be taken directly directly from my Welfare vs Wealth video I just did on the Demonic Gorillas. So if you want more in-depth info on setups and money per hour, check that video out in the description. It'll give you a lot of unique and helpful information. If you guys do like these videos, go ahead and leave a like, and also leave a comment for any other monsters or bosses you want to see an Ultimate Noobs Guide on. If you want to continue to see my content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We are getting closer and closer to 7k subs each day, so thank you guys so much for that. Now, let's get started with the Demonic Gorillas Guide, starting with the requirements. The requirements for Demonic gorillas are only the quest monkey madness 2 now this is a high level quest and it'll take many hours to complete depending on how efficient you are but this quest does also require quite a few pre-quests and decent mid to high skill levels i highly recommend doing this quest to unlock demonic gorillas and you will also unlock other things as well that will prove to be helpful so if you haven't done the quest yet go do it now and come right back to this video the recommended stats for demonic gorillas are 80 plus combat stats since you will be using both melee and range against them i do recommend you have have 80 plus strength and attack, as well as 80 plus defense to tank more, and at least 80 range to get quicker kills. You could technically do the demonic gorillas with lower level stats around 70, but I really wouldn't recommend doing that. I also highly recommend 70 prayer and unlocking piety, because as you do get better, you will want to use piety when meleeing and eagle eye or rigor if you can afford it, because that will speed your kills up. Also, since you will have to pray protection prayers the entire fight, higher prayer is always a bonus. It's also optional to get 94 magic and use vengeance to speed up kills, but it isn't required and some people prefer to use the standard spellbook instead and use high alk, but we will get into that later. The main reason people kill demonic gorillas is for the good drops that they have. They do have many good drops that will make consistent money over time, but the main drop that everyone camps the demonic gorillas for is the xanite shard worth over 14 mil GP. This shard is a 1 in 300 drop rate, so if you camp the demonic gorillas for a few days, you're very likely going to get one. The gorillas also drop other unique items like the ballista pieces, which are pretty much just troll drops at this point, and the troll of all trolls drops the monkey tail. Like I said, the other drops all make great money, such as the weapon and armor drops, the rune and ammunition drops, the herb and seed drops, and the other drops that include resources, javelin heads, and coins. I won't go super in depth on the money per hour in this guide, but just to be clear, if you can't the demonic gorillas, you're expected to make around 1 mil plus GP an hour, considering the xanite drop is 14 million GP alone. Now I will show you guys an example trip with some commentary so you understand how the mechanics work and how to kill the demonic gorillas, but if you need to first go a little more in depth beforehand so you understand. The combat style of the demonic gorillas is magic, melee, and range, meaning you will have to pray all the protection prayers throughout each kill as the demonic gorillas will switch attacks, but before explaining that, there is a special attack by the demonic gorillas where it throws a boulder, and if it does start to do this, it is only a one by one attack, meaning if you move one tile away, you won't take any damage, and you definitely want to avoid these attacks because they will do major damage if you do not move. I'll show you what the attacks look like. The magic attack has the demonic gorilla puff up its chest and then spit a green splat. The melee attack has the demonic gorilla claw you, the range attack has the gorillas pick up a rock and throw it at you, and the boulder attack has the demonic gorilla go back on its hind legs and stop its main attack. The boulder attack will only happen when the gorilla is using range or magic, so if it is meleeing you, it will not occur. Now while the gorilla does use three combat styles, their attacks are about 67% predictable. The demonic gorillas will switch attack styles every three missed hits, meaning if the gorillas are using range and you are protecting from range, you would simply have to count three zero attack splats to know the gorilla will switch attack styles. Within this mechanic, the first two zeros could still count even if you are not praying correctly, but the third zero would have to be with you praying the correct protection prayer for it to count. Otherwise, the gorilla will restart its three attacks with that attack style or it'll switch to a new attack. So it is best to pray the correct style and switch accordingly, and also, the demonic gorillas do have another mechanic where they pray protection prayers as well, one at a time that is, and they do switch their protection prayers after every 50 damage that is dealt to them and they will always switch to the last attack style that you used. So if you hit a 50 with your twisted bow while the demonic gorilla was using protect from melee, the demonic gorilla would then switch to protecting range and then you would melee it and it would switch back to range. I know it sounds complicated so I'll give you a quick simple example before eventually showing you a video. So let's say you are about to attack a demonic gorilla. You see that it is protecting from melee so you decide you will range it. Now after you attack the gorilla with range, the gorilla will always start with a random attack style that you cannot predict, meaning it'll either use magic 
specific range or melee. Since the gorilla is out of melee range with you ranging it, it would be advised to pray protect from magic or range, and then if the gorilla walks closer to you, then you would switch to melee, and if it used range or magic, you would switch accordingly. Since you know it has to be in melee range to melee you, let's say you guessed magic and you were correct, the gorilla would attack you once hitting the first zero, then again hitting another zero, and then the third and final time hitting another zero. At this point, you need to switch your protection prayer and figure out what attack is coming next. Since the gorilla is out of melee distance, you would want to pray protect from range, and if the demonic gorilla comes close to you, you would switch to melee. This way you will protect 100% of the damage because it cannot hit you before you switch to melee and the range prayer would protect you since the gorilla would just range you from where it is. So you protect from range, ready to switch if it moves closer. As it moves closer, switch to protect from melee, and then you will take zero damage. At the same time, you will have to look at the gorilla's protection prayers and switch between melee and range accordingly to deal damage up to 50 plus each time. If you were attacking the demonic gorilla and it was meleeing you, you would have to predict between either magic or range as it's the next attack coming, so this is an instance where you could take damage as you don't know if it's going to range or mage you. This is why you always want to be a couple tiles away from the demonic gorilla, and if you are right next to it during the melee phase, you want to click a few tiles away and switch accordingly so you don't take too much damage. Again, I will show you an example where I show you how to get there and kind of walk you guys through the mechanics with me doing a live commentary, but for now, this is a helpful way to understand it. We will get into the best weapons to use there, but first, the spec weapons. The only two options I would recommend using as a spec weapon would be the Ceridoma Godsword, which is an amazing weapon there, as its special attack heals you and restores prayer depending on your damage dealt. And if you can't afford that, use the Toxic Blowpipe spec as it also heals you. If you cannot afford either of those, then use the Magic Shortbow spec or the Arc Light spec. When the Demonic Gorilla is protecting from melee, you should range it, and the two weapons I recommend are the Toxic Blowpipe if you can afford it, and the Magic Shortbow imbued. If you do have a Twisted Bow, that would be the best option, but this guide is geared towards beginners, so the Blowpipe is a very good option. Option. When the gorilla is protecting from range, you want to use melee. The best option is the arc light and the dragon defender, but you do have to do a quest to unlock it and use ancient shards from the catacombs on it. I highly recommend using it, but some people will only use it there if they are on slayer task. Oh yeah, did I mention you can kill demonic gorillas for slayer XP if you get a black demon task. Super OP. Some people only use the arc light during slayer because you do have to charge it with ancient shards and those are a pain to get a lot of. The next best weapon is actually the tentacle whip with the defender and the final weapon I I would recommend would be the Abyssal Bludgeon. This weapon is actually the easiest weapon to use as it is a two-handed weapon and makes an easy switch to the blowpipe or bow as you don't have to make more inventory space to equip your toxic blowpipe if you're using an arc light and a dragon defender and you can just click it once to switch. If you do stumble upon a demonic gorilla and it is praying protect from magic you have the choice to use ranger melee so use whichever you want. Now I will get into the gear setups. I want to first explain that these setups have inventories that don't use a ton of prayer potions because they are geared towards average players and beginners and they also don't have a ton of gear switches so if you are more advanced and feel more comfortable you could bring more gear switches if you're really good at prayer switching and rarely take any damage you can decide to take six to eight prayer potions or super stores which will allow you to get 30 to 40 kills a trip but if you are a more average player bring what i show here i did test each of these setups out in depth in my wealth reverse wealth episode so if you want to learn more definitely check that video out the first setup is the low tier setup now this is a welfare budget setup that i would only recommend if you are rebuilding or maybe if you are an Iron Man, this setup costs a total of 500k GP, and if you use it for an hour and don't get a Xanite drop, you will make around a 600k profit with it. The gear is the Helm of Nata's Knot, the Fire Cape, the Amulet of Glory, Rune Arrows, the Arc Light, the Black Dehyde Body and Chaps, the Dragon Defender, Pharaoh's Gloves, Rune Boots, and the Ring of Dueling. In the inventory, we have the Ava's Assembler, the Magic Shortbow Imbued, a Super Attack Potion and Strength Potion, a Ranging Potion, four Prayer Potions, a Royal Seed Pod to get there and monkfish to eat. The next tier is the medium A setup. This inventory sees some slight upgrades. We now have the Varax plate skirt, the dragon boots, and in the inventory we have a major upgrade to the toxic blowpipe and also a super combat potion, an additional prayer potion, and sharks instead of monkfish. This setup costs 5.5 mil GP and you will get around 550k GP with no xanite drops, but you get more kills per hour so it is still better. The next tier is the medium B setup. This is what you will mostly see at the demonic gorillas. This setup upgrades to the Amulet of Fury, God Dehyde Body, the Berserker Ring Imbued, and the inventory sees a major upgrade to the Ceridome and God Sword, Divine Potions, an Angler Fish for the Divine Potions, Manta Rays, and the Rune Pouch. With the Rune Pouch, I have House Teleport Runes to restore stats and bank, but if you don't have a good house, just use the Ring of Dueling and the Ferox Enclave instead, and if you are good at prayer switching, you could instead bring Alkin Runes and Alkthi Rune slash Dragon items to clear up inventory space, 
and bring house teleport tabs or the ring of dueling as well. This setup costs 51 mil GP and you will average around 560 kgp an hour without a shard drop but again you get more kills per hour so it is better. The final setup is the high tier setup. We see upgrades to the amulet of torture, the bandos chestplate and tacits, primordial boots and amethyst arrows. In the inventory we now have the twisted bow, the necklace of anguish, the armadillo body and six prayer potions and an extra anglerfish. This setup costs a whopping 1.4 billion gp and makes just over 800k an hour without a xanite shard and averages by far the most kills per hour so it is the best option. There are some upgrades to be made such as the Nate does not face guard but this setup is still super high tier. Now it is important to note you should use your best combination of these items that you can afford but I have created a progression chart that I recommend you follow. You should first focus on buying the toxic blowpipe as this will dramatically increase your kills per hour and it costs around 4.1 mil gp. The next step would be to buy the necklace of anguish or torture or both if you can afford them and they each cost 15.7 mil gp. The next item to upgrade would be the Ceridoma God Sword to help your trips last longer and it costs 40.6 mil gp. After that you should upgrade your boots to the prims for 33 mil gp and finally the bandos pieces for 25 mil and 20 mil respectively. Keep in mind if you can afford later items but not the items in front of them obviously upgrade them first. This is just a progression chart that shows you how I think these items rank in importance at the demonic gorillas. For example obviously I'm assuming you're already using a Varax plate skirt and got dehyde with a berserker ring imbued so those are not on this chart. Let's say you could afford the Xanite jewelry and a Bandos chest plate but not the Prims, Tacits, or Ceridoma God Sword, so obviously do that instead. I use a combination of all of these items and I will show you that in my live commentary video. In order to get there you will be using the Royal Seed Pod as it puts you extremely close to the Demonic Gorilla area and it is honestly the only option you should use. Considering to use it you do need the Monkey Madness 2 quest done so it is a no brainer to use. After each trip you need to restore your stats and bank slash re-gear so if you have a player owned house with an ornate pool and teleports use that and if you don't use the ring of dueling to the ferox enclave and do it that way instead now we'll show you guys how to get there and how the mechanics look in person all right i am geared up and ready to go this is kind of the gear that i use i use a combination of all these setups i am using the prims the tacits the god dehyde body the torture i like the arc like the most so that's what i'm using and I'm actually also on a Slayer task, so I am using my Slayer Helmet imbued. Definitely recommend doing the Demonic Gorillas if you have a Demon task, a Black Demon task specifically. And then the inventory, I have the Blowpipe, the Ava's Assembler, and the Necklace of Anguish as my range switch, and then some potions and pots. And I'm kind of an average player. I'm not very good at prayer switching. I'm getting a little better, but not very good. So that's kind of why I'm using just six prayer potions instead. I average around 10 to 15 kills per trip. Not really the 30 trip or the 30 kill trip kind of guy. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and teleport to the Gnome Stronghold using the Royal Sea Pod. And this is actually the closest teleport there and the one I recommend. And to get there, you're going to run out of the tree by exiting and then kind of run to the northwest. And then we'll head towards the area. And keep in mind, we're going to be using prayers. So make sure you have that piety unlocked. And if you have rigor, go ahead and buy it because I'll be trying to use these as I'm doing it. But again, if you are beginning and you're a beginner and you've never done this before, don't focus on using your prayers like piety and eagle eye and rigor. Don't focus on them too much. Just kind of get the mechanics down because you will be having to switch the protection prayers quite a bit. So it's not really worth it to use those in the beginning when you're learning because you will be a little overwhelmed. But if you're good at prayer switching, don't worry about it. So the way we get here, we hopped over that gate and then we ran to the northeast to the dungeon sign. And this is where we are. These are actually the regular tortured gorillas. And where we need to go is over here to the demonic gorillas in the single way combat. There is a multi way combat spot, and you can technically duo the demonic gorillas. I don't really recommend doing it, but you could do that if you wanted. I'm not going to show the multi spot because it's really not worth it. What we're going to do is we're going to run there and we're going to pray protect from magic and hope that they use magic against us. Yep, it is. Okay. And then we're also going to use our pots. It's going to take away 20 damage, that's why we brought the Anglerfish. And the good thing about that is that now we have an extra inventory spot, so when we switch to range, we're ready to go. So I'll start attacking this Demonic Gorilla. I'm praying range, predicting that it'll use Mage. It switched to range. And now I used 50 damage, so it's attacked once, there's twice, and there's three. So we're going to take a step back, pray protect from Mage. So it's actually in melee, it's safe spotted right here, so we're going to switch to melee. Um, it's actually a safe spot right here. I forgot to mention that. I'll go ahead and show you guys another clip from another demonic gorilla just so it makes a little more sense. Okay, I killed that one for some law runes. I'm going to go ahead and find another one. 
Okay, this one's using magic, so it or it's using melee. That's the second hit. So on the third one, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to guess that it's doing magic, and it is, so I'm going to keep attacking it. That's 1-0. Make sure to be switching, remember. And then that's two zeros, and then just keep track. And then that's the third. So it's using range. Nope, it's using melee. See how it walked towards me? I messed up there. But go ahead and attack it with your mage and your range. Or go ahead and attack it with your melee and your range. And then just take a step back whenever the boulder attacks happen. And also take a step back when you think that it's going to switch after the third. So just switch to magic. So let's do this. One, zero. There's the boulder attack. Take a step back. Don't take any damage. There's two zeros. And then here comes the third zero. And it walked towards us. So switch to melee right away. You see how I switched there? And that's kind of the process. So just count it. That's the second one. And here comes the third one. Take a step back. Pray. Okay, it's switching to range. So you will take damage, like I said before, if it's melee, because you have to guess. But anyways, guys, that's how you do it. If you guys did enjoy this video and found it helpful, please leave a like so I know you want more of these types of videos. If you are not subscribed, go ahead and consider subscribing to see more of my content and to help us reach 7k subs. Overall, I highly recommend you do the Demonic Gorillas, and it'll honestly only take a couple trips for you to feel more comfortable. Just remember, always take a few steps backwards after the third zero, so you can guess the next prayer and take as little damage as possible. That's honestly the biggest thing there and once you master that you will take very little damage there if you guys have any other monsters or bosses you want to see a guide made for definitely let me know in the comments and i will make it happen if you guys want to talk in game join my clan chat heart blitz and also join the discord in the description we would really like to get the cc popping again thank you guys for watching stay tuned for my next video